Wait, doesn't this look exactly like the previous release? Well, not exactly, no. Hey everyone, this is Nick, and Ubuntu 21.04 has just been released, or will be in a few hours. While it's not the most featureful release that there has been in the last two or three years, it's definitely got some interesting features and some interesting omissions as well. So let's dive right into it, right after this. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider, meaning they provide hosting that you can use to run your own servers, whatever you need one for. I use Linode to host my own Nextcloud instance, but thanks to their one-click apps, you can deploy any type of server in, well, in one click. If you're a gamer, you can easily start your own Valheim, Minecraft or CSGO server. But if you're looking for a VPN, you can also one-click deploy your own using WireGuard or OpenVPN, and you can ensure there is no middleman trying to intercept what you're connecting to. Linode is affordable and has consistent pricing with data centers all over the globe. You can upgrade your servers in one click, just as I did on my Nextcloud instance to add more storage, and you have real humans behind it all to talk to 24-7 by phone or support ticket, even if you use the cheapest plan available, which is $5 a month, by the way. They also have very detailed documentation if you don't like talking to other human beings, which I know I'm not a fan of. If you use the link in the description to sign up, you get a $100 credit to use on your own servers, so head over there and give it a go. I am certain you won't regret it. Okay, so the first thing of note is that Ubuntu 21.04 uses Wayland by default. This is a move that had already been made a while ago and reverted back in 18.04. But three years have passed since, and Wayland has matured into a real replacement for x.org, at least on Mesa drivers, so Intel and AMD. For NVIDIA users, you'll still get the x.org session, as always. A pipe wire is also included by default, so for screen sharing and screen recording purposes, Wayland is now just as good as x.org. Of course, if Wayland doesn't suit your use case, x.org is still available in the session manager. As an intermediate release, Ubuntu uses the Linux kernel version 5.11, which should have support for anything you throw at it, including the latest AMD 6000 series GPU, if you manage to get your hands on one. Probably not. On the installer side, you also get the option to create a recovery key if you decided to encrypt your hard drive. That will help people who forget their passwords or destroy their systems. You'll also find a host of updated default apps, as always, with Firefox 87, LibreOffice 7.1, and Thunderbird 78.8. But in terms of updates, Ubuntu 21.04 is still a weird mix. You'll get some elements from GNOME 40 and some from GNOME 3.38.5, which means that you're not getting the full GNOME 40 experience. Now, officially from the system settings, you'll see that the release number is 3.38.5 and the GNOME shell very much reflects that. You still get the previous activities view with your favorite stock on the left side, your workspaces on the right side and the windows laid out in the middle of the screen disconnected from the virtual desktop they're on. Now, some people will think that's a benefit because they don't like the changes in GNOME 40. I personally think that the GNOME 40 activities view is a way better layout, more coherent, more usable, especially on laptops, but your mileage may vary. In the meantime, they still shipped some new app versions from GNOME 40. The system monitor with its new tab icons, the characters app, which is now a responsive app and should be usable on Linux mobile devices, and the disk usage analyzer. None of the major day-to-day -day apps are updated though. No Nautilus, no GNOME Software 40 here. You'll get the same versions you used to have on 20.10. Now, that's not to say that nothing has changed. Apart from the new default wallpaper, which represents this version's code name, Hirsute Hippo, the shell has also been tweaked a little bit. It's now in dark mode by default. Previously, you had white elements when opening the clock applet or the system menu. Now it's all dark mode and a lot easier on the eyes. The applications menu on the top bar and the quick lists on the dock will also use that dock theme. You'll also get a little bell icon next to the clock in the top bar to indicate when you have unread notifications, instead of a small dot, which is easier to understand I guess, and it will also be used to indicate when you're in do not disturb mode. Everywhere where symbolic icons were used, like the small triangles that let you dig down into submenus in the shell, or in the emoji picker, the icons have been made thinner. Now that's a really small and subtle change though. The theme for apps has also been slightly altered, notably in lists. Selecting an item isn't pure orange anymore. 
you'll get a less legible grey highlight with a small orange bar on the left. I found this new look harder to read, but it does look more elegant. New icons have also been added to the Yaru theme, including for Gparted, Sound Recorder, the Transmission BitTorrent Client, and the System Backup app TimeShift. Now, I won't bring back the debate on app branding and app icons, but it sure is nice to have a coherent theme for all your app icons, including the ones that aren't shipped by default. File MIME types icons now all sport a folded, rounded corner in the top right for more consistency, and the LibreOffice icons have also been slightly redesigned, although the difference is really minor. Now, basically, Ubuntu 21.04 doesn't redefine the whole desktop experience, it just brings more polish, more refinement, and more tweaks, which is always a good thing. Now, let's move on to the biggest change probably in Ubuntu 21.04, and that's how desktop icons are handled. The previous shell extensions didn't allow for drag and drop to and from the desktop, which was a major limitation. Ubuntu 21.04 now moves to desktop icons NG, or DING for short, which replicates the full functionality of the desktop icons of old. You can drag and drop from the file manager to the desktop and from the desktop to any folder. You can customize how things look and work with a nice featureful settings panel, including icon sizes, which folders or items you want to view, sorting, placement, adding new drives to the right or the left side of the screen, and more. Now, it's a really powerful extension that brings back the whole functionality of desktop icons. I personally still think that desktop icons shouldn't be a thing anymore, but if you use them and you like them, then Ubuntu delivers. Finally, laptop users will have access to power profiles in the settings, letting them switch from balanced power, which is the normal mode, to power save. These settings don't persist after a reboot though, so there's still a bit of work to do here. Still, it's nice to see that battery life is starting to be another focus because it hasn't been the greatest lately. Now, the Ubuntu desktop has been mature for a while now, and this release really reflects that, because there are no groundbreaking changes. Under the hood, sure, you're moving to Wayland by default, which is a good step forwards, but in terms of experience, the fact that the team decided to take their time before integrating the GNOME 40 changes means that they are probably starting to think about how to make sure that users get the best experience out of the box without really breaking stuff along the way. So if they need another release to fix their extensions and make sure that the GNOME 40 layout can be really well adapted to the Ubuntu experience, I'm all down for it. Now, other variants of Ubuntu also have received updates. The Ubuntu 21.04 ships with XFC 4.16, which adds new revamped icons, loosely based on Advita, and fractional scaling support. The Ubuntu added HexChat and Synaptic to the default desktop, and moved to the Ayatana indicators for the notification icons for better compatibility with most applications. On this note, XFC is probably the only major desktop environment I haven't tried yet, and it's going to be the focus of a new video series on the channel starting next month, so subscribe if you want to look at that. Now, Kubuntu 21.04 has nothing really special to it, it just uses Plasma 5.21 with a host of new features and refinements. Check out my dedicated video to know more about these changes. Ubuntu Budgie will allow users to move to a Mac-like look and feel in one click using the white Sur theme and icons. The default theme is also no darker, and the icons have been revamped a bit, there is also a new clipboard applet available, but that's only a small subset of the changes. Ubuntu Budgie has a very detailed list of changes that I'll link in the description below. It would really warrant a whole dedicated video to cover everything, but I really don't have time to work on every single variant of Ubuntu. And that's about it. As you can see, probably the biggest release here is Ubuntu Budgie 21.04. The Ubuntu desktop is mature, it's stable, it works well, and apart from the desktop icons, which were annoying a lot of users, now it's fixed, so basically the next thing is going to be the new installer in the next release, and we'll see what else they bring. So thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one, and if you want to watch somewhere else than on YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey, I left a link in the description below. Now if you really want to help support the channel, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!